what you need for this is borax, pipe cleaners, a cup, metallic paints, paintbrush, some eye pins, you can find those in the jewelry section of the craft store, and a necklace chain. To make the round geodes, you twist up your pipe cleaner into a bowl shape, and to make just regular crystals, you wrap your pipe cleaner around the eye pin. So then you take your pipe cleaners and you suspend them in your mixture, which will be about one cup of borax to about two cups of hot boiling water. And then you pull them out after 24 hours and you will have made crystals. And to make them kind of fancier, we, paint, we painted the back of the crystal um, gold so it looks like it's dipped in, in gold. What you'll need to make this cool glitter slime is borax, um, a small cup of boiling water, a bowl, a spoon, half a cup of water, and glitter glue. First you want to start by adding one tablespoon of borax to your hot water and kind of stir that up and let it sit. Then you want to dump all of your glitter glue into your bowl. and then add your half cup of water and mix it up. Then you wanna add just a little bit of your borax mixture until the slime starts to come together. And once it starts to come together, you can take it out and knead it by hand. And there you have it. Awesome, easy glitter slime. What you'll need to make fizzy dip is a packet of jello, citric acid, some powdered sugar, and baking soda. Two teaspoons of jello powder, half a teaspoon of citric acid, three teaspoons of powdered sugar, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Then you just mix it all together. Now the chemical reaction that happens actually happens inside your mouth when the substance meets with your saliva. The baking soda and citric acid create a fizzing. Our favorite way to eat it is with licorice and it's a family favorite. What you need to make this is rubber bands, some cups, alcohol, sharpies, and white shirts or scarves or pillowcases or whatever you want to make. Then you want to take your shirt and put it over the cup and put a rubber band around it and then draw your design, whatever kind of design you like. And then use a pipette or an eyedropper tool to add alcohol to your design and watch it expand and give kind of a tie-dye effect. The permanent ink in the Sharpie marker is hydrophobic, meaning that it's not soluble in water. However, the molecules of the ink are soluble in another solvent called rubbing alcohol. And that solvent carries the different colors of the ink as it spreads into the different patterns and you can see how color mixing happens and this is just a great science activity. To set the shirt you want to just throw it in the dryer for 15-20 minutes. This is super fun for bath time. All you need is cornstarch, olive oil, a liquid soap we used um, shampoo, and food coloring if you want. We ended up not using it and kept ours pink. Then you're gonna add half a cup of cornstarch, three tablespoons of olive oil, and a quarter cup of your liquid soap, and mix it up until you get the consistency that you like. I ended up having, add, having to add a little bit more cornstarch to get the consistency that we wanted. Then you have Play-Doh that you can play with in the bath and get clean, and when it gets wet, it gets you know, slippery and slimy and makes it a lot of fun, a great sensory activity.
what you need to make these are Crisco crayons, some containers. I found these cute little teacups at the thrift store, and then you need wicks. So first, glue your wicks into the bottom of your container, and then add the shortening to a container that you can microwave. And after you microwave the shortening, it'll melt. Then add your crayon in whatever color you want and mix it up. This is where I talked about how crayons melt slower than the shortening and why that happens. And then once your crayon is completely dissolved in the shortening, you're ready for your candle. All you do is pour it in your container and you have a candle. Just wait for it to harden. This super cool lip gloss, you need a grater, coconut oil, Vaseline, a beet, vitamin E that'll act as a preservative, um, cheesecloth, and maybe a few containers. I got those containers at the dollar store. Then you want to grate your beet and take a cheesecloth. And I used a rubber glove because I didn't want to stain my hand, and that pigment from the beets is what's going to give your lip gloss its stain. Beets have been used all throughout history as a natural dye. Then you want to add your beet juice inside of your little cup. Add some coconut oil and then what I actually did was I put it in a different cup and just put it in the microwave to make it a liquid. And then we added a little bit of Vaseline. We didn't really measure anything. You don't have to be too exact with anything. Just kind of make it how how you like it. And then I added the coconut oil and I mixed it in. And then I added a few drops of vitamin E to act as the preservative. What you need is essential oils, whatever ones you like, baking soda, citric acid, Epsom salt, a spray bottle with water, cornstarch, and you can put these in the center of the balls to make a fun surprise for the kids. Add half a cup of citric acid, one cup of baking soda, three quarters of a cup of cornstarch, one quarter of a cup of Epsom salt, and a few drops of your favorite essential oil. Then spray with a water bottle to dampen it. You don't want to add too much water because that's what creates the chemical reaction. So add just enough until you can get it to form a uh, shape. Put those little things in the center for the surprise and you have bath bombs. What you'll need for this is baking soda, corn syrup, and sugar. Now my recipe only makes a little bit, but you can feel free to double my recipe. What you'll need is five tablespoons of sugar, add that to a pan, and two tablespoons of corn syrup, and then you mix that up until it boils. I cooked on a low to medium heat. Then once it's boiling, I continue to stir, cooking it for another minute or two, and then add one teaspoon of baking soda. And as soon as you mix that in, you'll start to see it foam up, and then you'll want to quickly pour it into a flat dish and let it cool. And then the baking soda reacts, creating carbon dioxide bubbles, which is why it expands and makes it crunchy and fluffy. Okay, so what you need is um, a bowl, some flowers that you like the smell of, a citrus fruit, a spray bottle, cheesecloth, and some oil that doesn't have a strong smell. So we use sunflower oil. You want to chop up your flour and add um, some zest of your citrus fruit and put it in the oil and let it sit for about three to five days. And after three to five days, you're going to pour that out 
and squeeze it with a cheesecloth so that you have now basically made essential oil and it smells really fragrant. And then you fill up your little spray bottle with about one third of the essential oil and then the rest of your regular oil. And there you have your own perfume that smells beautiful. For even more science fun, go to RaisingDaVinci.net or find me on social media at RaisingDaVinci. Let's connect.